So, you did well in spring, you did your homework and watched a guide for it, like the one in the card in the top right of the screen, you took care of your bundles, upgraded your tools, got some money, and worked your way a bit into the mines. Now what? Well, you've got to keep the momentum going. I did say that spring is the most important season, but summer can still make or break your first year. We'll be going over which crops are the most lucrative, everything you'll need for the bundles, and what milestones you should be hitting for the season. Let's go over the crops first. If you have any coffee left over from spring, keep it in. Summer will be the last season they'll grow, so make the best of your coffee plants. So for straight money, blueberries will be your best bet. Not only do they have the highest gold per day raw, but since you get three of them per harvest, they're a great candidate for getting jellied. I feel like I gotta mention that starfruit are better if you have the desert unlocked, but since you're watching a guide, I'm gonna assume you don't. For bundles, you'll need to plant at least one melon, poppy, sunflower, blueberry, tomato, hot pepper, and corn. Yeah, it's a lot. On top of that, you'll need 10 wheat and five gold quality melons and corn. Also, let's talk about the red cabbage. If you've gotten lucky and gotten a seed from the traveling cart, now's the time to plant it. Otherwise, you'll have a chance to plant it in winter as long as you complete your main crop bundles. In the meantime, make sure to check the traveling cart every Friday and Sunday. If you don't have the fruit bat cave, you'll want to look into planting a pomegranate and apple tree as soon as you can. Even if you do have the fruit bat cave, you'll probably still have to plant an apple tree, since it's pretty rare. You'll need three apples and one pomegranate, plus optionally one extra each for the artisan bundle. This season you'll want to focus on planting a lot more crops than you did in spring. Craft your sprinklers as soon as you're able to spare the materials, and go ham to get enough gold to supply your upgrades. A good goal by the end of the season would be to have both a big coop and big barn to set you up for animal bundle items later. One last thing. When you have a fully grown poppy, don't pluck it. Instead, put a bunch of bee houses around it, and the honey they produce will be worth 380 gold instead of 100. Don't forget to water it, though. I don't think it needs to be said, but remember to donate the three seasonal forageables. Spiceberries, sweet peas, and grapes. Other than that, for foraging items you'll need to craft at least three tappers and upgrade your axe to iron. Tap one of each tree so that you can get maple syrup, pine tar, and oak resin. Oak resin's required for the enchanter's bundle, and maple syrup is required for the chef's bundle. And then all three are optional for the exotic foraging bundle. You can use your steel axe to get into the secret woods at the top left of Cindersap Forest. Only in summer, you'll be able to find fiddlehead ferns in here. Red mushrooms will also spawn less commonly. If you have the forest farm, this is less important since you can find fiddlehead ferns there in spring. You'll still need to open up the woods eventually though. It's a good source of hardwood since the stumps will regrow every day. As always, fishing is a go at your own pace skill. Go fishing more if you want the money, and if you don't enjoy it, there's plenty of other ways to get money. If you do want to fish, however, the ocean will yield the best profit unless it's raining between 6am and 5pm, mostly due to the red snapper being found in the ocean in the rain, being only worth 50 gold. In that case, fish in the mountains. It's also very possible to catch the legendary fish of summer, the crimson fish, at the east pier of the beach. It only requires level 5 fishing and isn't too terribly hard to catch. I'd still recommend a fairly high fishing level though. As with all the legendary fish, it isn't required for bundles, but it fetches a base 1500 gold. For the fishing bundles, you'll need, in the lakes, a carp at any time, and a sturgeon from 6am to 7pm. I also recommend catching a sturgeon to put in a fish pond since one of the items it produces will be required later. From the ocean, you'll need a tuna from 6am to 7pm, a tilapia from 6am to 2pm, and a red snapper from 6am to 7pm only in the rain. For the specialty fish bundle, you'll need a puffer fish found in the ocean 12pm to 4pm only in the sun, and a wood skip from the secret woods at any time. If you complete the vault bundle and unlock the desert, you can find the sand fish in the pond there from 6am to 8pm. Also I went over this in the spring video, but if you don't have it yet, the ghost fish is caught in the pond on floors 20 and 60 in the mines at any time. Also as a special little bonus, if you're wondering what the most profitable fish pond fish is, it's the lava eel caught in the lava lake at floor 100 of the mines. It's very difficult to catch, but you only need one to start up the pond. The row it produces is worth 380 gold each. They also have a chance to produce the spicy eel food item, which is great for going into the mines. Speaking of which... I know it might be tough, but I highly recommend completing the mines this season. All of that gold will be required to make a good amount of quality sprinklers to get your auto farm going. If you find yourself struggling, stockpile some good food for a serious trip in the mines, and only go on great luck days, noted by the Gold Pyramid on the Fortune Teller channel. 
If you complete the 2500 gold vault bundle, you'll get chocolate cake, and always keep an eye out for the changing item for sale in the saloon. It could be something really good. As far as items for the bundles go, just know that these can be done whenever, but Frozen Tears are forged on floors 40 to 79, Fire Quartz is forged on floors 80 to 120. You'll find Iron Nodes on floor 40 and above, Gold Nodes on floor 80 above. I recommend going for the 10 Bat Wings dropped from Bats and a Solar Essence easily obtained from Ghosts for the Adventurers Bundle. You'll also need a Frozen Geode from floors 40 to 79 for the Field Research Bundle. And you can often find Cave Carrots, Red Mushrooms, and Purple Mushrooms through the whole mines, used for multiple bundles. I suppose it's also useful to mention that you can find Winter Roots, Crystal Fruit, and Snow Yams on floors 41 through 79, but they're much easier to find from forging in winter. Plus, since you can't find a Crocus, you can't complete the Winter Bundle anyway. Let's go over a few things that aren't associated with any given skill. First, for the holidays, neither has anything important or worth it for sale unless you want a decoration. The Luau is super important for building up relationships. You're able to put one item into the pot to add to the stew. If you want the best result, some of the easiest to obtain items would be a gold sturgeon, a gold super cucumber, a gold catfish, or a gold cauliflower. A lot of the other items that would count are gold wines, which are both extremely difficult to have this early and also worth way too much to use here. By the end of the season, you can get money any number of ways, but what should you put it towards? As I said for the farming section, getting a big coop and big barn is important, especially since you'll need a pig by the end of fall. They'll run you 10k plus a bit extra to buy the animals. For tool upgrades, at this point upgrading your hoe, watering can, or trash can is optional. You'll absolutely need the steel axe, and getting a pickaxe to gold makes the last 40 floors of the mines a lot easier. Assuming you're starting at copper at the beginning of the season, the axe and pickaxe upgrades will run you 20k. Then for the lower priority upgrades, 10k towards the second backpack upgrade will save you a lot of hassle. You'll need 10k towards the house upgrade to get access to cooking, which will eventually be required for the Maki roll and fried egg. It helps to start saving up for the vault bundles, which you'll want done by the end of fall. Then you'll need around 10k to buy fall seeds. Add all this together and you'll want around 70k made, not counting money for all the small purchases like summer seeds or fish ponds that you'll want as well. This is really the first season you'll genuinely want to be concerned about your output. But plant enough crops and set up enough sprinklers and you won't have to worry about it at all. I hope this video has helped you. As usual, I'll be posting these guides alongside my Let's Play if you want to see a more in-depth look into my thought process into building a farm and going down the progression trees. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.